This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at enthalpy cycles. We'll start by looking at Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route by which the chemical reaction occurs. In this enthalpy cycle, there are two possible routes to get from reactants A to product C. One route is to go from A via B to C. The other route is to go directly from A to C. So according to Hess's law, the enthalpy change for the reaction will be the same if we go from A to B to C, or if we go from A directly to C. So this can be represented in equation form as delta H3, which is the direct route from A to C, is equal to delta H1, which is the route from A to B, plus delta H2, which is the route from B to C. So regardless of the route that we take to get from reactants A to product C, the enthalpy change will be the same. Next, we'll have a look at an example. In this enthalpy cycle, there are two possible routes to go from the reactants, which are carbon and hydrogen, to the products, which are carbon dioxide and water. The first route starts with the reaction of carbon and hydrogen to form one mole of C6H6, which is benzene. This represents the enthalpy change of formation of benzene, and we'll call this delta H1. Next, we have the combustion of one mole of benzene to form carbon dioxide and water, which we'll call delta H2. The value of delta H2, which is the enthalpy change of combustion for benzene, is negative 3,268 kilojoules per mole. Delta H3, which is the sum of the enthalpy change of combustion for 6 moles of carbon and 3 moles of hydrogen, is negative 3,222 kilojoules. According to Hess's law, the enthalpy change for the reaction is independent of the route taken. So in equation form, delta H3 is equal to delta H1 plus delta H2. If we rearrange the equation, we get delta H1 equals delta H3 minus delta H2. This gives us delta H1 equals negative 3222 minus negative 3268, which gives us an enthalpy change for delta H1 of positive 46 kilojoules per mole, which is the enthalpy change of formation of benzene. In our next example, we'll look at an enthalpy or energy level diagram. So we'll start with this downwards arrow on the right, which is for the enthalpy change of combustion of C2H4, which is ethene. So in the reaction, one mole of ethene reacts with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. And the enthalpy change for this reaction is negative 1,411 kilojoules per mole. Next, we look at the enthalpy change given the letter Y. This enthalpy change represents the formation of one mole of ethene from its elements carbon and hydrogen, which is the enthalpy change of formation. Note that this arrow is pointing in the upwards direction, which means it has a positive enthalpy change. Next, we look at the two arrows pointing downwards. The first arrow represents the combustion of two moles of carbon to form two moles of carbon dioxide. To calculate this enthalpy change, we multiply the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon by two to give us negative 788 kilojoules. The next arrow represents the combustion of two moles of hydrogen to form two moles of water. To calculate this, we multiply the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen by 2 to give us negative 572 kilojoules. According to Hess's law, the enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the route that is taken. So to calculate the enthalpy change for step Y, we can add together the enthalpy changes for these three steps. Note that because we are going against this arrow, we need to reverse the sign of the enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change for step Y equals negative 788 plus negative 572 plus 1411. 
which gives us positive 51 kilojoules per mole. This is the enthalpy change of formation value for ethene.